Not long ago, I found myself falling into a digital trap. I was addicted to my phone, prone to hoarding files and bookmarks, and it's not hard to guess that I was wasting a lot of time in apps, files, and programs that I really didn't need to be using. When I followed the techniques that I'll be talking about in this video, my relationship with tech finally started to improve. Hey friend, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Dan, and in this channel, we explore the strategies and tools to become more effective and productive. So if you're anything like me and you're always trying to look for ways to work smarter, please consider subscribing to the channel. And now let's continue with this video. So I want you to picture this. It's a regular Tuesday morning and you have just woken up. Your first instinct is to check your phone and this is what you see. 103 WhatsApp messages from a group you didn't even know you were part of. Two missed calls from your mother and three emails from your boss, all with the urgent in the subject bar. And of course, a notification from Facebook reminding you to wish an obscure acquaintance on his birthday. So what do you do? You reply to all the emails, call your mother back, and finally you sit down to work, but you just can't find that document you were working on and all those websites you had bookmarked to refer to. And so you give up and resign to the comfort of a YouTube video just like this one. But maybe, just maybe, this is the video you need because you finally had enough. The problem with this scenario is that it's a bit too real and it's time to put an end to this madness. Life happens when you look up and around you, not at screens. So let's dive into what we can do to improve your digital lifestyle. Now, all of us have been guilty of hoarding a ton of files that we really don't need. If you're saying to yourself right now that you're not the one that does this and that everything on your device is something that needs to be around for later, let me break down what this digital clutter really is. It's the dozen of files spread across your computer desktop screen. It's the tons of bad blurry photos that you have to scroll through on your phone to find the good ones. It's pages and pages of apps on your phone. It's searching through hundreds of emails trying to find the one that you forgot to respond to. All this takes up your time, your energy, and not to mention your storage. So what I want you to do now is go through your files and delete all the ones that you don't need. Articles that you saved for a project you work on 2016, documents you had saved to get printed, and all the blurry pictures that you will never need. Once you have deleted everything that you don't need now or in the future, you're gonna split your files into two categories the ones you use regularly and the ones you don't. And for the latter, you're gonna upload them to the cloud. The major contenders are photos and old files you don't need. When you back everything up, there is no fear of deleting stuff to make space. If you need something you deleted, you can always get it back whenever you want. And if you can automate the process of backing up, you don't even have to think about it. Do this on your phone too. The prime candidates on your phone are the podcasts and musics you don't listen to anymore. You can always stream instead of downloading. Another important area to clear up in your phone are your contacts. So browse through your contact list and delete numbers you won't need ever again. And of course, as you clean up your desktops and phones, you should also uninstall all unnecessary apps and programs that you have on your devices. Start by deleting all the apps you don't use anymore. As for the apps you need, but you don't use them frequently, you can consider using the browser version. As you go through this process of removing everything you don't need, you should also go through your email and unsubscribe from anything you don't need, such such as newsletters, groups, mailing lists, and notifications. Also go through a social media cleanse and follow and unfriend everything and everyone you no longer need in your feed. If it doesn't interest, entertain, or inform you anymore, it's time to go. Once you have removed everything from your devices that you don't need, you'll need to understand how to organize what you have in an efficient and minimalistic way. And that is what we're gonna be discussing next. As you use your computer to create and download files, it's easy to become buried in a sea of tiny icons with vague names. One of the places that gets cluttered up first is usually your desktop, so that's exactly where we'll start. What I like to do is don't have anything on my desktop. And it's also nice that I put a picture that kind of inspires me to work a little bit better. So what you're going to do is remove all the files and programs from your desktop as well. I know it seems like an easy choice to save most things on the desktop because you think to yourself that it will be very easy to find what you're looking for. But to be honest, how many of the files on the desktop do you really open every day? You can always use search or spotlight like this to open the files when you need them. Once your desktop has been cleared, let's talk about the folders. Search is so powerful now that filing becomes a thing of the past. Instead of getting lost in a maze of folders and subfolders, I prefer to use fewer but bigger folders. So personally, I prefer to use a system of only four folders projects, areas, resources, 
an archive. So projects is anything that has a deadline on it and that I'm working on at the moment. Areas is something that has a standard to be maintained, like my personal blog or videos for you guys on YouTube as well. Resources is where I put what I'm gonna need at some point. And the archive is where I store what I don't need anymore from the other three folders. This very simple system of folders helps me see at a glance what I'm working on, what I need at the moment, and also not lose all the important documents that I need because they'll be on resources and also on the archive. And then if I'm looking for a particular thing, I can search within the folder. So if I'm searching for a YouTube to upload to you guys, all I need to do is to go into the areas folder and search within the YouTube folder. So when you use fewer folders, what you want to do is make your content searchable. And so what I like to do at this point is choose easy names for the folders and the files. So that way I can always find anything quickly using search. So search is basically your new best friend. So instead of remembering locations for important documents, you can simply use the search bar to type in what you need and then simply select what you're looking for from the results of the search. And the same principle apply to apps on your phones. So what I like to do is place the four most used apps on the dock at the bottom and then I put everything else into a single folder. Most phones nowadays will allow you to use search not only to find apps but also content within them like finding someone's phone number by typing their name. And that saves you a ton of time and energy. You can find what you need in seconds using search instead of having to look through all the files and all the apps on your phone. Next, we'll discuss some things you should do while using your devices to avoid distraction and really stay focused on what you're doing. One of the main problems of technology and using the internet is how easy it is to get distracted. To really make the most of technology and be efficient with it, we need to learn how to focus when we're using our computers, our phones, or using the internet. Now, we're talking about minimizing distractions. So I'm sure that you've guessed that the first thing you're going to have to do is delete your social media. Trust me, you'll survive. Social media isn't necessarily a bad thing but it's definitely a bad habit. The truth is there are so many platforms and more coming up every day that it makes no sense to be using all the platforms available. So instead, maybe you can keep only the ones that you truly love. And of course, if you wanna go a little bit more hardcore, you can delete all your profiles or to be less extreme, simply deactivate your account. Even with social media out of the picture, your phone is sure to be flooded with notifications and the constant ding sound from new articles, emails, ads, and from all the other apps on your phone. So Obviously, the next step to avoid distractions is to turn off your notifications. Leave phone calls, text messages, yes, but remove all the other notifications. And trust me on this one that the world won't come to an end. And when you want to check something, you can open the app and do so. And by doing this, you're not letting the app control you to open it. Another great way to avoid distractions coming from your phone is to schedule a do not disturb after working hours so you can relax, such as from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Now I know what you're thinking that if you turn off notifications, you're gonna miss all your important emails. The truth is the average adult checks their email 45 times a day, but nobody has claimed to have changed the world by checking email. So what I like to do to avoid procrastination via email is to treat email as a to-do and schedule it in my calendar. I only check email twice per day, normally late morning just before lunch and then late evening just when I'm finishing my work. A good policy to follow here is no email before 11 a.m. You're gonna spend the early morning performing deep work on critical goal that moves the needle on your goals. Another thing you could do while checking your email is to have an end time. 25 minutes per session is more than enough to process email. Another simple but effective thing to do while working on your computer is to work in full screen mode. Most apps today offer full screen mode, a perfect and simple way to block all distractions. And at the end of the day, close all your tabs and apps, delete or move all the files from downloads, empty the trash, and shut off your computer. By cleaning your computer or your phone, you're helping future you to get started. The last idea that I wanna leave you with is that digital minimalism is not something that you do once and then you're done with it. It's easy to delete and declutter your digital life in one big swoop and then immediately start collecting digital junk again. And that's exactly why digital minimalism is a process. It's not something that you do, it's something that you are. Therefore, you need to become a better gatekeeper of what you allow in your digital life. Constantly purge anything that doesn't add value to your life. And remember that I'll be doing the same thing 
chatting with you on the other side of the screen. By keeping this up, together we'll develop a more mindful relationship with tech. And soon it shouldn't be so much of a hindrance to our productivity than an aid. So please let me know in the comments how your relationship with your devices has transformed after following the ideas from this video. If you like this video, you'll also love my next one where I talk about my four-step process to stop procrastinating. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.